Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to be creating a, an application that displays a grid with images that are downloaded from uh, URLs that are emitted inside a JSON feed. And as you can see, we, we have a grid view and then we have loading indicator for each of these images. As you can see that they, it's loading the images. And then if anything goes wrong with these images that we're going to display a little message to the user saying that, oh, an error happened. Um, we can demonstrate actually this loading indicator by going to system preferences, network link conditioner 3G, or actually let's say, do we have any better connection here? Uh, Wi-Fi, I am uh, kind of on Wi-Fi, but let's just say 3G. Gonna kill the app, start it again, and you can see the loading indicator on these uh, tiles basically displaying you uh, that it's, yeah, it's starting to load the images for you. So this is what we're gonna achieve in this application. And uh, if I, tap on any of these images, it's going to open a web view that uh, uses URL launcher package that we're going to also use in our application. And you can tap, uh, sorry, you can pinch and zoom and yeah, uh, and you can pan as well. So this is what we're going to achieve in this application. I've created a little um, application here, um, which uh, let's have a look. Um, I'm going to go here. Yeah, uh, yes, I've created a little application here. The source code is available right here. And if you know me, I really like to start with a clean slate. So what I usually do is I go and say literally, sorry, I have to look at my keyboard sometimes because the microphone is blocking my face. So I have to look at the keyboard. I'm going to create a, a stateless widget. I'm going to call it home page. And in here, I'm just going to say a material app. Uh, and the uh, home is my home page, just like this. And in there, I'm going to return a scaffold, uh, scaffold like that app bar is an app bar with a title of a text that says Flutter, as you can see right here. Um, and we are going to have a body for now that says hello world. Okay, like this. Okay, I'm going to save my app, go back here, and then restart to see what happens. Great. We got the hello world working. Um, since you know, as you saw here, when you tap on these items, we need URL launcher. And URL launcher is a package that you have to import in your pop get, uh, in your, um, in your packages, basically in your pop spec. I'm going to say pop spec YAML. Uh, and I'm going to import URL launcher according to the installation files. So um, let's go to our dependencies here. You put URL launcher, command S in Visual Studio Code. And I think in Android Studio, you have to actually press a get or something. Okay, it's done its work. Um, after these like big changes in my pop spec uh, file, I really like to do a Flutter clean. Uh, go to terminal, say flutter clean, uh, flutter clean. Good. And I like to do uh, flutter pop get. Okay. Um, now I'm going to stop this from here. That kills the application engine run without debugging to start it back up with all the correct de dependencies uh, of our URL launcher. Now, I'll put together um, two JSON feeds for us. One is that uh, it returns our images. The other one, it returns images that link to incorrect URLs so, so that we can test the error states of our, uh, of our widget. Um, and I put those in um, basically bit.ly. Um, I can create a little Safari page here and I'll, I'll show you in a second. Hmm. Just like this. And I'm going to go here. And as you can see, we have a, a JSON feed here that gives us our images with a title, URL, uh, and a thumbnail URL. Uh, we are not going to use a title URL for now, but you can if you want to. For instance, if you want to show the title 
on the bottom of the images, you're more than welcome to do that. We're just going to use a thumbnail URL for now. And then we're going to display the thumbnail URL and we're also going to link to the thumbnail URL as you click on it. So that's that's the first one. Um, and I use, usually go to Bitly and paste these things there and get a shortened URL. So I'm going to go into our app and I'm going to say final correct URL is URI HTTPS. The authority is bit.ly and the path is this. That's, that's the correct URL. Okay. The, the incorrect URL, I'm going to get it for you. If I can just find it here would be this one. And, and as you can see, the thumbnail URLs are all incorrect. The wrong URL that comes on file that, that doesn't exist uh, until one of you maybe just buys this domain <laughs> and puts that image there. I don't know. But for now, it doesn't exist. I'm going to bitly this one as well, get a shortened URL like that, shorten it. And we're going to put it here as the incorrect URL. Okay. Uh, like that. Sorry about that. Um, and also like this. All right. That's our incorrect URL. He's trying to do a hot reload. Poor guy. Hot reload doesn't really work if you're not in your application, just so you know. So um, that's good. I'm going to get rid of this uh, debug console down here by pressing command shift Y on a Mac. Let's see it like that. All right. So we can see the code. Okay. Now, what we want to do is to start parsing these or, and downloading these URLs and parsing their content. So I want to write, uh, I'm going to import HTTP. HTTP, let's see. Oh, right. We also have to get HTTP. Um, let me get that dependency for us is 0131, I can see in their website. Uh, I'm going to go to our pop spec. Um, where is it? Command shift O, pop spec, YAML, dependency HTTP, command S is going to get our HTTP package for us. I'm going to go there. Let's see if we can import it now. Import package, HTTP and HTTP Dart. That's what we want. And then I'm going to get Dart convert. All right, we have to put our imports up there, of course. Um, I'm going to get import Dart convert. Good, as JSON decode. Uh, let's do that. Okay, because we're going to use convert later uh, as we're decoding that JSON. And I also want the URL launcher. Okay, URL launcher Dart, just like that. Okay, that's fine. They're not being used right now, but we're going to use them soon. Now, now that we've done that, let's go and define our thumbnail class. If you look at this, these are thumbnails. I have a title URL and thumbnail URL. Okay, we can define these very easily uh, just using strings. Um, right now, I'm just going to define a title and a thumbnail URL using strings. Okay, and we're going to call it thumbnail class. Final string title and final string thumbnail URL. Command dots in Visual Studio Code, create constru constructor for final fields, just like that. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to pass, you know, it, as we're parsing, we're going to get these as like packed data and we're going to pass this to our thumbnail class. So it can return a thumbnail given one of these dictionaries, which is a dictionary of string and dynamic, I would say. Yeah, or string, string. Um, so we will say um, thumbnail from JSON, and that we get a map of values here. And we're going to use an initializer list here using a colon and say title is JSON title as string, and thumbnail URL is JSON thumbnail 
URL as string as well. Command S, and that's it. We got our thumbnail class. Now we need an, an async function that downloads and parses a feed for us given a URL, okay? So I'm gonna go and say mm, future of list of thumbnails and uh, download thumbnails, excuse me. Just like that, and this is an async function, all right? Let's actually pass a URI to it as well, just like that. Okay, then I'm gonna say final um, JSON is a weight of HTTP get. Didn't we import HTTP? HTTP, yeah, as HTTP, I think. That's good, so we can refer to it as HTTP as well. HTTP.get uh, URI. Okay, that's our JSON. And then I'm going to say this is a list of JSON values. Um, so because we're passing these into the thumbnail, we're actually going to get a list of those from the decoding of our JSON, okay? Um, and I'm going to call it value is equal to JSON decode. And our JSON variable has a body just like that. And then we're going to cast it to a map of string dynamic. Boom, 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 like that. Refers to an import prefix, so it must be, what does it say? So it must be followed by, oh, really? Uh, JSON decode, let's see. Did I say as JSON decode? No, I don't want the whole module to be named JSON decode. I wanna just get JSON decode. So I have to use show. That was a mistake. It shouldn't be as JSON decode. I want to actually show. Uh, okay. Uh, a show, by the way, the difference between show and as while we're here is that as names this whole module inside my code as HTTP. So I can refer to everything inside the module with HTTP dot. But show, what it does, it doesn't import the entire content of Dart Convert. It only imports JSON decode. And it just command, uh, you can command and click on it to actually see its definition. So you can see it's literally just a function here, right? You can see cache, package, sky engine, lib, convert, JSON, dart, JSON, decode. That's it. Okay. Uh, now that we got a list, we are going to convert them. Uh, so I'm going to say return a value. Maybe we should call it values or thumbnails. Okay. Thumbnail JSON. Z. <laughs> or thumbnails JSON. I don't know, something. I, I'm so bad at naming. I'm just gonna say thumbnails JSONs. Okay, so it's it's is a JSON. No, is a JSON of thumbnails. <laughs> that's, that's better. I'm gonna map this uh, E and then I'm gonna say thumbnail from JSON E. And then we're gonna say to list because this is gonna be an iterable. Just like that, we got our download working. Now to the fun part, um, we are gonna create our grid, okay, in the home page. So for the body, um, I'm just gonna say a future builder. Future builder is really cool uh, widget that allows you to bind the life cycle of a future to the creation of your um, UI. And this is something that I really wish Swift uh, had built in because um, it's, it's really, really useful. Uh, you also have Stream Builder, but Stream Builder doesn't really match our use case here because we don't have a stream of data coming, coming in. We actually download the JSON feed once and then get its data, parse it, and display its content. So that's it. We don't have a stream that changes its content as it goes on, for instance. So we're going to use Future, future Builder. Um, the future that we're going to pass to it is our download thumbnails. Okay, Down, download thumbnails function. And we are going to, to start with, give it the correct URL. All right. The initial data is empty for now. You can pass initial data here if you want to, but we don't have any data right now. I'm not going to use that right now, initial data, but you know it's there, okay? 
And then we have the builder. Um, I'm going to press command space here to get code completion. And from here, you have to, from the builder, you have to return a widget. Uh, so you have to tell future builder, okay, here's the data, you, here's the future you got to give for me. And as you do that, give that data back to me as snapshot. And then I'm going to give you a widget back how to present that snapshot. So this snapshot is very important because you got to switch its uh, snapshot connection state. And you can see that there's cases, for instance, uh, waiting uh, connection state waiting as it is waiting for data you can see the documentation for waiting it says connected to an asynchronous computation and a waiting interaction okay there is also case for connection state dot done none and things like that so we're going to use waiting and none for now and a default case and also, we're going to go with case connection state when it's completely done. There, we're going to return our grid view, okay? Uh, for waiting, I'm going to say return um, maybe a center widget with a child of text that says uh, loading, something like that, okay? For none, uh, the documentation says that it hasn't really started yet, I think. Not currently connected to any asynchronous computation it's like as it's getting ready so i'm just going to say getting ready or something like that you can you're free to change this if you want to getting ready like that and otherwise i'm also going to show loading for now you're more than welcome to change this okay and as you can see it says loading for now because we're not doing anything with done i'm going to now return a text here that says done so you can see done command s you see loading and then done so here we're going to return our grid view all right um how do we get the thumbnails the thumbnails final list of thumbnails is equal to connection state um or wait a minute there's a snapshot and that has data i believe and we can put an as here, as blup, like that. And then I'm going to say return for now text done. And I'm going to print these for now so you can see what they look like. All right. Command S, Command Shift Y. And here you can see instance of thumbnail, blah, 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 blah. So it's got all the thumbnails for us. That's really good. Okay. Excuse me. And there I'm going to return a um from the thumbnails i'm going to return a grid view and this is the exciting part grid view uh, and we're going to use uh count yeah count the thing count is good um let's see grid view count that's it and cross axis count which is i mean a grid view is a vertical component so its main axis is kind of like a columns axis it's like top to bottom cross axis of a grid view is horizontal line on your screen it would be like from left to right right on my screen as well i don't know why i said on your screen so horizontal axis for a grid view is left to right uh, so um and that would be the cross axis count we want if you see this application we want two items on each row so i'm gonna say two here okay um main axis spacing yeah let's put i don't know um uh, eight and uh, another spacing cross axis spacing of eight as well for now um uh, that's said and i'm gonna say i think there was a uh children here which is the the list of things or, or the widgets that this uh grid view has to display so i'm just gonna say thumbnails map and that's a thumbnail and then i'm gonna say thumbnail widget which we don't have yet we're gonna create the thumbnail widget t to list okay let's go since that it is very angry right now with us, let's go create a thumbnail widget 
uh, STL thumbnail widget, a final thumbnail, thumbnail, and create a constructor for it. Command dot in Visual Studio Code, create constructor and make this required. Okay, put a comma here, get the formatting a little bit. Let's see, it's still not happy with us. Oh, here, because we have to give it actually the name of the uh, parameter. Uh, thumbnail. Too many positional arguments, zero expected, where? Let's see. Thumbnail widget. Thumbnail is T. Good. Like that. And in here, we got our thumbnail. For now, I'm just going to return text and say image like that. Just an image like that. All right. And you can see we got our images. Uh, I mean, the text that just says image for now. And I would really like some padding here. Uh, I'm going to wrap the uh, grid view here in a padding. But maybe it is actually easier. I want to see if I embed the whole future builder in padding. Mm, uh, it doesn't make any sense because the rest of the components that are going to be returned from future builder are actually center aligned. Padding doesn't make sense for them. I'm going to wrap the grid view in padding with standard padding of eight. Okay, that's a little bit better. Good. Good. Okay. Um, that was really good. We now got our thumbnail working. Now, if you look in this application, you can see that um, these items are inside a little container that has a little little white border and it's got a shadow it's really nice box shadow around it so we kind of need that to be available for us to use okay so to just keep that in mind we need a widget for that but maybe we don't have to do it right now um so let's go and create our image or thumbnail widget, which I think we created. Oh, there's a little bit of formatting problem here. I'm a little bit OCD about these things. So put a comma there and command S to get dark formatter to do, the, do its job. Okay, in the build method of our thumbnail widget, we're gonna start with a little container. Oops, what did I do? No, go away, okay. Uh, a little container. Let's see. Or we, we can actually start with an image network and the source is the thumbnail, thumbnail URL. Return it and see what happens. You see, we got our images. That's, that's really good stuff. I mean, isn't that awesome? That's really cool. Um, but if you watch my other videos, uh, I think my previous videos was actually talking about this, about image networks, error builder, uh, progress builder, and all that stuff. We're going to get that going now. So let's start with the frame builder. And the frame builder, I'm going to return for now a text that says hello. All right. Um, the frame builder of a network image allows you when you allows you to embed the downloaded image widget in another container okay so you get a chance to basically frame it that, that's what it says frame builder just imagine you got an image you got like you've developed an image uh, uh, like an old school uh, image and then you want to frame it so this is your chance to frame it and I think this is this is the place that you want that little container I was talking about that frames it for you. You see a little white border and the shadow. So maybe it's not a bad idea to do that container now. Okay. Um, let's call that uh, class container with shadow. Okay. And this is just concerned with um child final uh widget child um it also 
is going to be concerned with uh, tap events. So um, let's give it a URL to open when the user taps uh, on the image. You remember here, boom, we want that. Okay. So I'm going to delete, or I can actually go on this and command dot on it and add the final uh, variables there. All right. Um, we're going to actually, this container with shadow is a, is a stateless widget, right? Uh, I'm going to make it basically extends state less widget. And I'm going to get the build function here. Come on. I'm going to copy this build function from here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. That's it. Um, and of course we're going to return our little uh, container. Uh, let's see. But you know, I think we're going to get a stack basically. Um, I think, do we need a stack? I think if you, what, what you really want is, if, if you remember, I, the one that I'm doing here is an image with border and shadow, but I said that you can also use a stack to display the text in here. I mean, you can, you can display the title of these images. So maybe it's not a bad idea to prepare the application for that. So I'm just going to go and return a stack here. Um, just like that. Good. And the children of the stack, the first one is going to be a container, which is the frame, the actual frame of the image. Okay. Uh, the child of the container is going to be child, which is the, the image passed into the container with shadow, um, like that. And I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm not going to do anything more with it. Okay. I just, that's it. I'm going to press command S and see what happens. Oh, we still got a hello in there. Right. Return. And I'm going to say return. Uh, what's it called? Container with shadow in the frame builder and child. And then I'm going to say thumbnail, thumbnail, thumbnail URL. That's it. Boom. Okay. That's it. N no more modifications for now. It's looking fine for now, I think. Okay. Now we're going to go start adding shadows and borders. Um, and I'm going to say decoration, box decoration. Hmm. And for border, I'm going to say border all, um, and then color, colors white. That's our border around the container. Command S. Um, and then I'm going to go to uh, create a box shadow. And uh, I'm going to say uh, box shadow. And I'm going to create a blur radius of five. Argument box shadow can be assigned a parameter list. Okay, because this is a list of shadows basically. So, so. Okay, you can see we got some shadow in there, and that's why the background is visible. And the offset, I'm going to say offset of zero and three. So horizontally, it's going to just center the shadow in the middle, and then it's going to bring down the shadow by three points. Okay. You can see that that's it. So you can see that the shadow is not extended on top left or anything is brought down three points comma here to get the formatting going. Uh, I'm going to give it a nice color here and I'm going to say colors black with alpha. What happened there with alpha of 40 uh, expected to find. Oh, I'm in the box shadows. The color should be here. Yeah, that's nicer. And then I'm going to say a spread radius of five. Is that it? Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah, for now at least. Yeah. Um, let's see. 
that's that's really good i think for now at least yeah uh, and then we're gonna put a gesture detector here on the stack because when you tap on the stack you want to open the url okay so we can get the gesture detector working right now so i'm gonna say gesture detector and i'm gonna say on tap and this is an async function because um the url launchers open function is um or the launch function is gonna is an asynchronous asynchronous function so i'm just gonna say await launch url to open boom boom i'm gonna tap on this and see what happens boop all right we got the tapping working as well so now i think i think our work is actually done with this to be honest with you with the with the stack because this is this is the first child of the stack if i want to i can also say hello world for instance and then give it a style uh, and say text style and the color of that will be colors white um and you can see that it's being displayed there you can customize this as much as you want and you can get like the final string title in there if you want to for it to display the title it's not that difficult to get it to work uh, but I'm just showing you the possibility and the fact that we prepared this uh, widget uh, using uh, basically we prepared this widget so that you can pass more uh, values to it if you want to. All right, let's go back to our image network uh, because there we also have to build some more functionality. Um, and that is, for instance, our loading builder loading builder uh in there the loading builder is your opportunity to return a widget to be displayed as your image being downloaded that's so well thought out i think so let's say total bytes is equal to loading progress which is uh, which is progress uh, if you see is an image chunk event uh expected total bytes just like that and this is an optional loading progress and i'm gonna say bytes loaded is loading progress uh cumulative bytes loaded that's it and i'm gonna say if total bytes is not null and bytes loaded is not null then return uh, a linear progress indicator um, and I'm gonna for the value say uh, bytes loaded divided by total bytes okay uh, value just like that loaded and if these values are nil then you can just return the child that is being brought here uh, to your function so I'm gonna press command S. Ooh, that was a huge progress indicator. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. But I think that's because uh, this whole image network doesn't have a height. Um, I mean, we can give it a height of 100, but that's still, yeah. Oh, I, I think we're messing um, the grid view. We haven't really uh, set it up correctly yet that's okay we're gonna do that but this height is also okay because that's the height of the images as we expect them to be displayed we're gonna configure the a grid view more as we go along um that's our loading builder and for the error builder boom boom command space like that i'm just gonna return a text that says error for now and you have the possibility to come uh, like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do every piece of code in here as it should be because we have no specification but I'm just showing you the possibilities so here you get an error builder and you can display uh, any text any message you want or maybe even a dummy image in there and maybe even a button that the user can press to retry downloading with set state and etc so you have all the possibilities in the world yeah because these are not really I mean I'm not really happy with the way these are the, the way that we should do it is like this this is this is nice and i can kill this application Shoof. and i can open it again and you can see that these images 
like center aligned very beautiful but here we, we we don't have that and since we're returning an image from this thumbnail widget all the stuff in there such as its loading builder are going to be as big as the image so if we wrap this inside a container just like this and then do a little alignment of alignment center let's see how it behaves now i'm going to go back to the application oh that's it right i think this is a lot better because previously i mean i i can remove this and you command s it again you can see the image is like not in the center of their containing like cell in the grid view and they're like on top left um and since the image is the main component being returned from the thumbnail widget the grid view has no idea how to size the rest of the components being returned from the loading builder and the frame builder and the error builder so it's just going to say okay everything is as big as i have place for it but since the height of the image was changed to 100 the image itself is going to be 100 but everything else is not going to be so command s remove the height you can see everything's ginormous put the height back so enforce a height of 100 for the images and then bring this into the container again command dot container and then what a alignment align man center command s yeah i think this is a lot better Everything's center aligned in the containing uh, cell in the grid view and the images have a loading indicator, etc. So I think that actually concludes the video. Uh, there are lots more you can do with this application. For instance, you can cache the images. There's You can look into network imaging because with the height key and the width key, there are some, uh, some if you see cache height, sorry, cache height and cache width, you can ask image network to cache your images for you so it's really powerful we're not going to do all of that in this video because otherwise this video is going to be two hours long but you have the possibility to do that so uh, i hope you enjoyed this video uh, i hope i didn't rant too much uh, and showed you uh, basic the basic components and building blocks to create such an application so and i hope that it could inspire you to extend upon this uh, application I'm going to put the source code in a GitHub repository for you uh, to experiment with. Uh, and I hope you enjoy this video. Have a good day.